sorry. It's 530. One. <laughs> so we're going to call this meeting to order. And the first item up is the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ms. Barbara Board Williams. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Next, our mission statement will be read tonight by Michael Buber. Beaufort County Schools provide quality educational programs and services to ensure student academic and vocational success. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? No, no public comment. So uh, move to move over to the approval of the agenda. Move approval. Second. Do we have anything need to be changed on? Added? We got anything added. If you good? make sure you F five. Yeah. Okay, so we should Refresh. be good. We F five. You say F five. Just F five. You'll have the latest version. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to this agenda? No. Okay. And minutes. You should have two sets of uh, minutes, a closed session and a regular from June 28th. Hopefully you've had a chance to look over that. Move approval. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on that. If there's no other questions, all in favor, say aye. 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 Everybody opposed to this. Okay. And that carries us to the no action portion of our meeting. And first up will be save the pool and who's going to make Matt, sure Matt's going to present and what, what uh, we want to do is to have you all have an opportunity to hear the proposal from from Matt again and then we're going to be talking about some capital uh, for the 16 17 year moving forward we're not taking any action tonight but we felt like it would be good to have this on the table for discussion as we talk about capital budget stuff for our next meeting as well sure okay thank you Dr. Welcome. Phipps and thank you for allowing us to, to come today and speak with you Again, my name is Matt Rochenbach. I work with the uh, City of Washington. I'm the Finance Director, uh, Christy Robinson. She's our uh, Director of uh, Parks and Recreation. So, um, the Pool the Aquatic Center at our sports complex has been a, uh, a, I guess, has been a funding issue for the city for a number of years. Um, don't generate enough revenue through the um, membership to, to cover the cost of uh, operating the facility and it actually takes a subsidy out of the uh, property taxes and sales taxes each year of about three hundred thousand dollars to operate it um, beyond that um, the uh, the pool is what 15 18 years old 16 years old and it has a huge uh, dehumidification unit that's is housed in the uh, mezzanine or the attic of the uh, mm -hmm. the pool and it's at the end of its useful life and that's a very expensive unit mm -hmm. initial estimates were about three hundred thousand dollars council did uh, approve the the operating portion of the pool's budget for for next year but they would not fund the capital portion um christy and the uh, the pool committee came up with an idea that um they would uh, uh, host and, and, and have a fundraiser for the balance of this calendar year and if they could raise half of the money needed for the dehumidifier they proposed uh, and asked council if they would fund the uh, the remaining half and and council did did agree to that um, we've been at it since the first of June and I'm pleased to report that uh, Christian and her team have raised over twenty thousand dollars in just six weeks so they had a golf tournament I'm sure you've seen the ads in the and the, the paper had a golf tournament that was quite successful we're going to have another one in October they had um, a pizza in night where um, all the tips plus 10 or 20 percent of the of the, um, the the meals went to the to the campaign they're having a car wash this Saturday from 8 to noon at uh, in front of the Verizon um, and we're selling little commemorative mm -hmm. tiles, various kinds of things, as well as taking uh, donations. But uh, we appeared before your board, I think it was in May, late May or early June, and, and made a request. And I know it's uh, unusual, and I understand the, the tight budget that you're, you're under. And I've seen what the county uh, is allocated to you guys, and I know it's extremely tough. but. And we made a request of twenty-five thousand dollars, but I do have some good news. We've gotten, uh, we visited uh, Roanoke Rapids, who has a uh, facility almost identical to ours, and they just replaced their dehumidification unit in the last six months. And we 
went out for I got two more quotes and we're able to get the price down to um, a little less than half of what we thought it was going to be so it's going to be about one hundred forty five thousand dollars so initially we had requested for you to consider twenty five thousand but based on the revised estimate we would uh, would like to uh, respectfully request uh, half of that amount twelve thousand five hundred dollars if you can find a, a way in your budget or your fund balance to appropriate that uh, to us we we certainly would would appreciate it because you know we're doing all we can do to to raise and I think it would it would it would help us get the rest of the money from our council too if if we could get support from the community and the community stepped up so far so with that I'm uh, happy to answer any questions uh, we're happy to host the, the school swim team to come practice there we love for them to come there they did a, a great job and we're all proud of them to to win the uh, the states this, this past year and we'd like to for that to continue to happen so any questions any, any questions unrelated to that Matt do we do we have a firm number on what the cost would be for our teams to use the facility for practice yes in, in years past and I don't know how long this has been in place but it was eighteen hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. for the the swim teams and then we we and it hadn't been adjusted so we did look at the number of hours that is being used and we're recommending that it increased uh, I think it's seven thousand six hundred dollars it's plus or minus a hundred dollars dr. Phipps okay. but we're, we're recommending that it it increased to that and that's uh it costs so much per hour to operate the pool and that's just to cover the cost of of operating the pool okay, okay. thank you okay all right Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, that, that carries us into a capital budget uh, for 1617 from Don Phipps. And, and Stan is here too. I just want to walk you through, again, this is a no action item, but we feel like we need to look at what we had originally that we commit, uh, that we presented to the commissioners and then taking a look at what we've got in terms of our allocation from the commissioners, what we need to do moving forward. So we need to go ahead and get a capital budget approved so that we can start some work. And we wanna show you some recommendations. And when you add it all up, it comes up to more than what we've been allotted by the commissioners. But the whole point of that was to let you see what some options are that we could pick and choose from. If you click on the first link that's there, it's a PDF file, and it is the original document that has the capital request items in it. And you'll see shaded in yellow, are all of the things that make up the safety and security piece and also the system-wide technology and and those are important to consider because I'm, when I have you get to the next file I just want you to see kind of what we're walking through I've also got a hard copy if, if you prefer to have a hard copy and look at it you certainly can do that uh, in addition to what's on on the screen that you've got um, but when you look at the first yellow shaded we said safety and security most of these are things that we wanted to do to create that uh, <coughs> catchment or containment area in each school so that, that visitors on campus wouldn't be able to have access to the building or the campus without going through an area and then being buzzed in or allowed to enter. There are a couple of other things on here that include, a, one's a new intercom system and there are two fencing projects that we've talked about, but I just wanted you to be aware of those and you can see those as you go through it. On that second document, just kind of working from the top down, system-wide safety and security uh, totals 466920 uh, that includes $300,000 in new camera installation. We said that camera installation project, we felt like to do everything we needed would be about 900,000. We wanted to do it over a three year period of time. That's an area that we could scale back a little bit if we if you felt like we needed to, to do some other things. But that would, in a three year period, would give us what we need to do uh, with, with, with the camera system. System-wide technology from Mark Malik, 400 grand. I, I don't feel like we can cut in that area because it impacts everything that we do in the, in the classrooms and across the board. When you add those two together, it comes up to 866,920. When you take the amount allotted by the commissioners of 990,639 and you do the math, that leaves us with a balance to spend on all of the rest of the capital items, 123,719. So thinking about that, and you look at what our projects are, Stan and I and, and Russ have gone through and looked at what was on the original list to try to highlight things that we felt like needed to be done that weren't the huge ticket items. And as you look at that list, you'll see a good number of them are 6,000, 3,000. 
what is is missing from that list that I'm afraid is going to come back to bite us down the road is we've gotten into a good pattern of replacing activity buses, but an activity bus costs somewhere between ninety one thousand and ninety two thousand dollars. So if we add that activity bus to the list, which is certainly up to you all with what we want to do, it's going to greatly cut the spendable amount that, that we've got there. We'll go from about one hundred and twenty three thousand to uh, you know just a little, little bit over thirty, maybe thirty two thousand dollars that we would have to spend. Uh, talked to Lynn this morning and, and without putting a firm number on and, and she was quick to say we've got several projects that aren't completed yet so we don't know what the final closeout in our fund balance of being able to spend but we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 180,000 we, we hope and and that may fluctuate a little bit as we have completed projects come in and we have a couple more that we hope would come in a little bit under budget which would help us down the road but until they're considered completed then then uh, Lynn doesn't uh, put that back in in terms of a savings or a cost overrun uh, for us to do the, the balancing with that but on the sheet that you have whether you're looking on your computer or the hard copy in front of you I tried to put in bold the first section under the word balance is considerations from the original capital list. These were just things that Stan and I picked out, and we could have picked out any number of things. Asphalt repair, there were, I think, 200 and some thousand dollars of asphalt projects. And Stan feels like if we do the repairs at the right place, we can buy ourselves a year or two on asphalt work. So there was a $20,000 uh, tab that we put there for system-wide. And then just to explain what else is on that sheet, the next section says items on hold for the Eastern Elementary enclosure. Remember, we had to hold that 300 grand. So we set these projects aside. It could be that you want to go back and pick some of these projects up. It's not going to be able an and do this and. We're going to have to do swapping them out. It's going to be or. Right. And then you've got projects that came in with bids over the budget in the 15-16 school year. And we have an opportunity to look at those if you feel like there's something on there that absolutely has to be done. And then we had one project that was questioned in the way that it was specced, and that was the canopy at North Northside High School. And remember, we had two two bids, and one of those was only an eight-foot wide canopy. That may be something we want to completely respec and bid out again. So really what I'm giving you is kind of the snapshot of what Stan and I have looked at. It doesn't mean that there's not a project on here that you might want to include that we didn't include, but we felt like we had to have a working place for you to start from. And then what I'd like to do is come back at our meeting in August with the recommendation uh, that really would come out to nine hundred and ninety thousand six hundred and thirty nine dollars but a big portion of that's going to be taken away because of safety security and technology and then the question is going to be do we do an activity bus and if we do that then it changes the dynamic of a lot of this because we have a lot less spendable money a, a balance to work from for the remaining projects so I wanted to throw it out there just for any <laughs> feedback and again we're not looking for action tonight on it well any we questions? would be able pending um, at uh, when we you know and meet in August whatever uh, and approve some of this are these pretty concrete figures on the safety and security bids Stan do you feel like there will be any wiggle room at all in those bids um, if we can get them we can bid these projects together for us, these storefronts and this thing yes ma'am we can save some money by purchasing in bulk you know, if we do each one of them individually and it goes out for every project, then these numbers are pretty secure numbers. Are some of these um, items doable in-house? Yes, ma'am. Some of the work is figured us doing it. Yes, I would, th yes. I would think so. Yes. Um, so it's possible, not necessarily probable, but it's possible but that there would be some wiggle room at the end so that some of these items that are down here on hold could be moved up, right? Yes, and depending on whether Eastern's project comes in under budget as we hoped, then we'll free up some money that we are currently holding. And are you going to address that next, or can you address that now? It's on the agenda. Okay. Coming up. Yeah. okay. The, other, figured, so. the, the other two items I think that need to be on the mix, and Stan and I talked about it, and I, did, I failed to put it on here. The cafeteria wall at Southside High School that Stan's talked to you about, where we've got the wood problem. That's a project that's going to need to be, we're going to have to deal with that or we're going to have major problems. We're looking at about $10,000. That's not included here. We'd have to figure out how to add that on. And then the project that we had at Ed Tech with the doors with the, is it a lintel? Is that what it's called? The lintel and the overhead. Um, you know, that'll be something that we we'll come back to you that with. go into the cafeteria? Yes, right. ma'am. The old cafeteria. Right. Yeah. And I have an architect coming tomorrow to look at that project. So we'll, we'll have some more information. But th this is not a comprehensive list. I mean, we'll, we'll, we, again, we took it out of the master list in the presentation that we made to the commissioners. But you all may feel very strongly about different projects. But I felt like we had to give you something to work from and to react to. And, and I'd love to take that feedback 
well, not tonight, you haven't had a chance to look at it, but between now and the time we meet in November uh, in, in August and put together some type of a, of a proposal for recommendation. But pretty much you can take attachment two, compare it to attachment one, <laughs> and see if there's anything on attachment one that you would rather be, you'd rather have on attachment two than what they suggested. I mean, that's how simple it is. But the only wiggle room, really, um, safety and security, the 300,000 for cameras, I mean, that's the only, I call it, I think it's the only wiggle room there. Do you want to take, go 200,000 and put 100,000? Um, we're two buses, we already need two buses. That was one, what was on the original two request. The original. And we skinned that down to one. Yes, we have so, one wrecked and then yep, replacing the right. wrecker. So somewhere down the road for too long, we're going to be looking at buying that's two whether we right. want to or not. So you might want to just see if that's important to everybody. Just think about it. You got time to the next meeting, right, Don? That's right. Mr. Chairman, before mm -hmm. we start doing a whole lot of wiggle room, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want us to get caught in a crossfire with the commissioners. If right. that's what we have been told, that that's mm -hmm. what we're going to spend the money for. I mm -hmm. hope we go back and tell them that we had to regroup because you uh, we we're, right. we're communicating <laughs> good with them. I don't want us that's to. Right. I want us to be up front with them, and which well, they watch the TV. They that catchment area, about. I think, is is the biggest piece. Yeah. And if we still do part of the, it, what we'd be doing was we we would roll out the capital, the uh, camera project a little bit slower than do it over three years. But sure. all the other pieces inside with the storefronts and that that would be. Yeah, and and our understanding yeah. was that we'd be able to use the money that way as long as we said that we were going to ensure that those projects right. were completed. Okay. Is, so, is this uh, the cameras are they? outright cost we own them is that correct have, have we yes. done any research on leasing well that's what we were into before in leasing and the, the, the type the whole concept they were under and proprietary and they were the only ones able to work on that's what you run into when you run into a lease a lot of times is proprietary and not being able to interaction these all these belong to us we can move them use them as we need to I'm just wonder if there's a company out there that leases you the equipment and and as far as being proprietary, it would be it would be ours. I can't really say Russ and Mark Malik and the, the, his crew have all been in the meetings and that I've kind of stayed out of the, okay. that side of it. So can't honestly. And I, I've sat on sat in on a couple, and, and those were questions that we had. One of our concerns right now, we're paying a, sur a heavy fee for a service contract on some of the equipment that we've got, and once we get out of that, we feel like we won't be tying up money in a service contract. We'll have it more in hardware. But I'm just concerned with technology, how it. <laughs> Constantly changes. Constantly changes, and sometimes it's you know instead of buying things like that to purchase, and then you you can't really resell the stuff because it's out of out of its technology technological use. So let's have Russ talk about that because he spent okay. quite a bit of time looking at the camera pieces. But if you lease them, they'll update it for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But back to Max's point because he's he's 100 percent right. We don't want to change that 466 unless they know we change it. That's right. Absolutely. But I, I know for a fact that this, that what he's talking about, those storefronts and things, in the, that's what they're not going to wiggle on, and I don't want to wiggle on that. No, 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 no. We don't want to change no. that at all. No. And by the only, the only remind, thing, yeah, the only I thing didn't mean not change. do them. I meant right. are, I these, I are these concrete yeah. figures. But, right. but we would only change so. that with their okay on that. Right. Okay. So take a look at these for the next meeting and see if you think there's a project ought to be on here that's not on here or the other way around. So. Anything else, Tom? Not for that. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think that would, well, I thought it went, yeah, it does. Goes to stand on capital update. So we're talking capital, just a little different, just a quick version of all the current projects. Yeah, and you don't have to go through each one. No, so you, does only explain your highlights to us, how it's highlighted. Does he have a copy of it highlighted? Miss Lisa. <laughs> oh, okay. I see a lot of yellows and the then yellow these different colors. Yellow is finished. And the ones at the bottom that aren't, that are brown. So pretty much anything at the top that's not coded in, I know we haven't worked on it, or I'm, I'm trying to read it, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the only updates that I currently have is um, we have started on the north side and the northeast project. Um, they have completed four rooms upstairs, and they will complete the rest of north side high school this coming week if materials arrive as scheduled, um, which will be this Friday. Um, they did start on the Northeast Media Center. Um, they have all the carpet up and will start installation and hope to be finished um, by next week too. Um, Glass Tech has, I don't know if they completed, they were scheduled to complete the south side cupolas today. I don't know if the rain affected or if they actually got through before the rains came in or not, but that's the 
updates and the barred units okay. are waiting on a PO. So. Right. And, I, and I can read through it and everybody yep. else can too. I just wanted to see this document because you can take a quick look at it and tell what projects that are done, projects we're working on, or if there's a project that we haven't tackled yet. And this is from last year. So I, I thought it'd be important to know what we haven't done before we start talking about another year. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I want to ask you is Eastern <laughs> Elementary. We're exactly, I'm trying to read this. Where are we at on those enclosures? Because I know um, we got to get that stuff done. We have pre bid get back tomorrow in. at 2 p.m. at the meeting starts at my office at 1010 Pennsylvania Avenue, and we'll go over to the construction project. And then the bid is the 28th at 2 p.m. Um, we'll be receiving the bids. We're running this simultaneously with, with uh, DPI's approval. Um, we asked for expedited approval on the plans. They have them in hands. Um, everything we're pushing it along, and and we really won't know till we get the bids in on what phase of the project. We met met with Miss Dana, Doctor Phipps, and I met with Miss Dana um, this past Wednesday, I think it was, um, to try to work on a schedule um, okay. and a how we can do it with school because it's going to interact into the school year. It's going to we're not going to have them done by the school there's year. There's no again. way the total project can be completed by the school are you, year. Are we saying the bids will be back the 28th? What yes. are we saying? Yes, we will have bids on the 28th. We'll have bids back on the 28th. So once we approve those, then they can go right on the work, hopefully. And they've already started, they've already been in contact with our long. attorney to get the contract sitting in place. So we'll just basically fill in the dots and right. have it all ready, right. ready to be moved. So, yes, sir. They were looking at the jackhammer, I think, the concrete. And getting, getting all the demo, the everything out of the way. Get that done. Okay, because that's demo piece. So they, we don't really know how long it'll take once they start. Though. That's right. Once, once if whoever is awarded the bid, then they'll give us a construction um, estimated, estimated project. And, and as date. our luck is, when they start tearing up concrete, they'll find something else. <laughs> we do not have any Sorry, plans. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. It seems like we do problem. not have any plans for that school, and there's a lot of things that have been changed over the years and a lot okay. of unknowns. So. Stan, um, yes, the, the, I wrote out the look at the building the other day. The, the road that's coming in from 264, <coughs> is that going to be an accessible road that's going to come into that, uh, to the multiple pur purpose building? No, ma'am. It's not? Okay. No, ma'am. The road is a fire access lane around okay. from, Damn. I forgot the name of the street. It's around where the apartments are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, cutting down through that low ground is actually wetland, and it's, it's not there. It was old service road through there years ago, and they used it to start the construction, but now they've had to cover it. Diener made us cut, cover that back up and plant grass on it. Oh, okay. Oh, so I was riding on the grass? Yes, ma'am. Oh, if you well, cut through that. Well, you probably need to close it off. Well, there is a yellow ribbon. The There's a yellow ribbon and some posts up on the far end. This up there by uh, the crane, yeah, we, so. I came in from the yeah, yeah, came from around 264, <laughs> but I yeah. went out to watch yes, the Yes, ma'am. If you follow the dirt road around, there yeah. is a lane, and it says yes. fire lane, and it is marked as fire lane. And okay, fire I just wanted fire to know because I was wondering. You think a piece of rope and a ribbon is going to stop Miss Booth? No, not if I really want to see. So, so the enclosures are not going to be done by the time school starts, and they will be working on them as school starts. Is that Correct. what you're saying? When did DPI finally get back with us? You said what you? we've been waiting for them to get back. No, we um, weren't waiting for DPI. We were waiting on a signed contract here that we finally mm -hmm. got. That was the hold up the contract here with here MHA. Like us. Yes, ma'am, with us. Oh. And, and through that, and through and through Therrington and Smith trying to get the wording worked out and, and something in contract. hand that we could actually sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. We probably lost two and a half weeks or three weeks, two, maybe probably least, three weeks trying to, to get that taken care legal, of. Legal legality stuff. So, no DPI was aware. They were the one that recommended us hire an architectural firm to do the project. So they are aware and they're going to do an expedited turnaround. They said they would get as quick as they could for any changes and any changes will have to be addressed in a change order if. They missed anything. If MHA has missed anything, as far as fire egress, and they say they have got all the bases covered, they've looked at it every way possible, and they and there's some doors got to be upgraded because the doors are not ready. I just think it's important we let the public know because I get asked that a lot, and they don't understand why it's been. A well, Miss Dana's gonna make them everybody aware during her parents' uh, meeting. She's gonna request that the, the parents come to a preschool meeting without the kids so they can sit down and explain and work on routes of um, entry and egress entries exits and stuff this type of stuff 
So Miss Dana actually has the plans in her office where she's working on that. And structurally, one of the concerns we had was that door going out from the, the, office. By the, by the They don't feel like there's a structural issue with the building there. So which we were afraid that was going to be a great deal of work. One settled. Yeah. They're going to okay. be, they feel like it was hit in some way, so they're going to work on that piece of block and okay. some support. Well, it's non weight bearing. That's right. The true architectural engineer has been looked at it and said there's no structural. There is some structural damage, but it feels that's where the door is hit by something, not by a build, building load. Most of our projects from last year then have been addressed, Correct. most of them. And we still have one out, I think, that we rebid the Chocolate Middle School cafeteria. I think that one's out because we didn't get any bids from it before, right. so we sent that out again. Considering the ceiling, the, ceiling, the washable ceiling. Considering what the 16, 17 capital is going to look like, we'll be able to catch up real quick. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Okay, well, this, it'll give me time to look over this, but this is the document I wanted anyway, so the, the, two, the two drainage projects, the one at Northeast and Snowden that you're doing in-house? Yes, sir. Are they are they done? Or? No, sir, we've obtained the materials. We're, we're working on them. We're okay. trying to get them done. We're working our way around each okay. campus. So. And we were down at Northeast and started on the walking trail walk. That's underway, so that's one part of it, was getting around there to get it put in. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I think it just takes time to look at it. Appreciate it. Uh, student transfer report. This is something that Lisa and I created, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of years ago that we have shown you through uh, over a period of time and, and we haven't brought it back to you for a while, but we wanted to show you what we look, what things look like right now. And what I'm going to recommend is in the superintendent update every month that we just put this in here updated. So if you want to take a look at it and see how things have changed from month to month, you can do that. It looks confusing when you first take a look at it, but everything on the left-hand side, reading up and down, would be students coming from that particular school, and then you read across the top, left to right, that will be going to that school. So if you look at Bath being the first school there, if you read that, that will be students that come from Bath that go to the other schools, and, and you see the North numbers East. that are listed there. The anomaly that we've got in here, and, and I, I don't know if it uh, is something that is an indication uh, that there's a little bit of a change going on, but we've got about 25 students that are not accounted for that have n normally attended Pamlico County, and they've not done the request, and I hope they come back to Beaufort County, and it could be that we've just not gotten those requests in for some reason, but uh, we want to keep an eye on this. It kind of gives you an idea of trends. Some things you know already sure. are going to yeah. jump off the page, uh, and it's going to reinforce what you're aware of. But mm -hmm. it's interesting to look at the number of students from out of county that come into Beaufort as well. But you mean they're just there without permission? No, they've, they've, we're waiting to get the paperwork. No problem. So we don't have it turned in yet. Okay. That's right. So you, you can see from within the county the kind of movement, and you can see the count the movement from our county to others or from other counties inside Beaufort. But that is a snapshot of, of everything that we've got. Obviously, it doesn't include charter schools and does not include private school, church school related stuff. This is just the public school transfer forms that we get. And if a student's not doing it legally, we don't have documentation of that. But this is all based on the forms that are turned into our office. I'm just making a couple of notes while I'm trying to read over it here. It's four to seven kids. Yeah, the ones that sh jump out at me is S.W. Snowden. 47. Yeah. That's 47 kids. Mm -hmm. That would make a huge difference in that school. Mm -hmm. What, about 25%? Close to it. Yeah, and you're, yeah. And you're losing eight South, South Side students to Pamlico. Yeah, I had to that. Yeah, that's a good You're right. But anyway, this, this gives you a quick look at it. Now, uh, is, is this students that are just just transferring this year or is this students that have transferred in the past and just had to get approved every every year because you got 16 17 on here that was a question i was going to have too all the transfers have to be done annually okay so, so whenever the okay. paperwork comes in we've got them. the other thing that jumps off to me is the fact that we got 23 students from bath that go to northeast i was wondering about uh, that. that's part, part of that, that? maybe the attendance line some of it has to do with family uh, people okay. that teach there. Mm -hmm. This includes also faculty members and staff members and things right. like that that we allow to have their students uh, with them. So, you know, I would encourage you to look at it. If there's something that you want to know more about, we'll, we'll take a look at it. But this is just to give you a snapshot of what the movement looks like within and around the county. And, that, and that's why I was asking, like, at Northside, you've got 16 students going from Northside to Washington. That's, that's not 16 new students this year no, no. are going. That's 16. Yeah. Okay. M many of those are continued in and some of those may have I mean, they've been there for 
for possibly this may be the fourth year of them doing right. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, there's nothing much to say. I mean, these are numbers. Some of it is kind of baffling, but they are what they are. Anybody have any questions about this? I don't think mm -hmm. so. Okay, let's move on. Uh, well, trees. Okay. <laughs> That's back, a new one. Trees back in 2010, a uh, group called the Pine Needles Garden Club of Washington met with uh, our board, and I think at the time we had a building and grounds uh, group that met and they wanted to do a tree planting project at P.S. Jones and John Small. And they've sent something to me and have asked that uh, the, the money that was in their fund be given to us and that they no longer be responsible for the trees that were planted. Um, so I really don't know what there is that we can do other than to say we've got trees now that we'll be responsible for. I think we have to find out uh, landscaping wise, they've been there all along, so they've been cutting around those. But in terms of making sure that they're alive and healthy, uh, that's one reason why we're reluctant to put things on campus just because of the work that's involved with that but I just wanted you to be aware of that they've officially made that request to us and I wanted to give it to you and I'm not sure there's any action to take I don't think we can accept the trees they're on campus now <laughs> and we don't want to cut them down so we'll, we'll look after them but I wanted you to be aware of that but don't we need to know why uh, they can't take care of them because that probably could come up again it says, we planted 38 live oaks and 12 crepe myrtles with the help of Pamlico Turf and Landscaping and the club members on March 17, 2012. Uh, during the day of planting, sessions were held to teach the students about the trees and how and why they were planted. As of March 2015, they were all thriving. We replaced one of the live oaks twice on the John Small playground area. Um, and then we had an individual who also came after the last hurricane and staked the trees and has mulched them twice since the planting. They were all doing well with backup funds from the project. We were able to also donate planters and plants to help beautify the entrance to both John Small and P.S. Jones. Um, as of spring 2016, there have been several trees that have died and the person who's cited here thinks that it's maybe due to them not being maintained and the fire ants are hurting the health of the trees and we'd like to turn the maintenance of the trees over to the Beaufort County Schools. So suggested maintenance would be the mulching and pruning as needed along with replacing the dead trees. The Pine Needles Garden Club is giving a check in the balance of the Learning Tree Fund of $617.87. And we could give you an update on what we're spending annually. Um, if the mulching part is part of the landscaping contract, Stan might want to look at that, or is it a separate thing that we do? I don't know how far 617 will go in terms of maintaining and looking after the trees, but uh, we like them. They, they make things look yeah. better, but there's also a cost that goes along when we do any planning like that, and that's one of the concerns that we have anytime we put something in the ground to take care of. But um, we, we want to make sure that they thrive and they, they do well, and we'll use that money. Uh, the best we can to make so sure I that guess they just the, the club just uh, the mark went out of business oh they just stopped dissolved, dissolved. No okay went away <laughs> no longer oh. oh okay it is another one does it is what it is so I just wanted you to know not not no. request any action I don't think there's really any action to take mm -hmm. okay okay that moves us, speaking of action, that moves us to action. We have three items here we should be able to make some quick looks at. One is the calendar. Quick and easy here. Yep. The, the calendar that is presented, and you've got a copy uh, as you click on that. One of the state requirements that we have is, are that teachers are paid 215 days. Now, what I'm getting ready to say has nothing to do with the, the date of enrollment or attendance dates for students, but if you take a look at the month of June, uh, if you if you go all the way down to that annual leave day which is on June the 19th which has kind of an orange backing on it if you count up all of the numbers from the first day that teachers come back until that day it's 216 which is one more than we're required we're allowed to do by the state so to correct that what we're proposing and, and I want you to see this even though it doesn't affect students you had adopted a calendar yeah. what we would do would be to move the annual leave day on the 19th to the 16th and the 16th would no longer be a work day it would just be an annual leave day that teachers could take and that would get us to 215 days it does not affect the beginning and ending dates of students doesn't affect any teacher work days when school's in session it would just be those last two dates we lose the 19th and we make that annual leave down the 16th hmm. move approval second okay we've got a motion and a second anybody got a question i think it's pretty straightforward 
All in favor say aye. No. Anybody no. opposed to that? That was about as painless as it can be. <coughs> and next one should be also custodial contract. Supplies, custodial supplies contract. Let me make sure we're not doing custodians. We sent out an RFP for a full service custodial uh, service contract. It was bid number 57. Um, the bids were open and received by administration and recorded. Um, the low bidder was Savelle Inc. of Hillsborough, North Carolina, and the bid amount was $136,810.08 annually. Um, we would like to seek approval to proceed with checking references, and if everything checks out, we'd like the approval to proceed with signing a contract approved by Ms. Kim Edwards. Okay. Now, what's the length? I know we don't. We're not doing contracts by year. You're two right. years two with years. a one year, two time <coughs> right. extension, max of four so years. We're, we're going in for two years. That's not yes, sir. Annual, two year right. contract. I don't want to do anything. But it, I didn't read through word okay. for word the contracts. Yeah. Um, did they? Um, I, I'm sure. I know the specs were out there, but yeah. did the contracts come back in pretty much word for word? That are we getting the same job for the? That's, that's what we want to look to, Dr. Phipps and I would look through most of it today or looked at some of it. We want to make sure the chemicals are, are the same chemicals. We did ask some questions when they did come around in their pre-bid stuff about waxes and solids right. and this type of thing. So we do want to compare it, but also want to check their references to see how they're working out for other school systems. And they did give us $30,000 difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Check them so, out good. <laughs> so are you, are you asking us to approve the bid or to approve your uh, request to check out the references and the request, request to check out the references is what we, we need to move forward with. We'd like to based approve on, the bid right, based, approve on the bid based on it. Yeah. 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 Right. That's what okay. So, so we don't have it, to revisit it yet. So we won't have to right. revisit it unless something pops up that That's you right. feel like you have to yeah. come back. And I'm also going to ask Kim to look at the contract. And I think she actually was instrumental in writing the contract with Image Supply. Uh -huh. So I want her to look at it and make sure that there's not a glitch <laughs> there and approve it. Assuming that the reference checks are okay and on the legal side, the contracts, the way that we'd, we'd want it to be written, then we'd be able to move forward. Because I wouldn't know these chemicals, but it would be easy to overlook and find out you're getting something inferior and the way you find that out is when everything starts looking bad right. so understand if you vote yay on this we won't hear about it again if it all checks out this right. is this is the deal this now, is the and if you all remember Sophia used to have the contract they did. and mm -hmm. then image, here yeah it's prior image, to yeah. and we had a big very good round uh -huh. there so we need to check it close is what you're saying? Yeah, uh -huh. I, I, no, I, I'm just saying it, this is very competitive bidding here. Yes. This is These guys know each other very well. So, you right. know, just make sure you're right, that's every you. eye okay. dotted and every T's crossed. I'll, I'll make the motion based off of the references checking out and the contractual right. uh, through Kim. I'll second check, your motion. I'll second. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got a motion and a second. And if you want to ask a question, now's the time. If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed to this? One okay. question. Yes, ma'am. Why would we deal with them again if we had problems with them before? Well, I, I they just got outbidded. That, that, oh, the one no problems, really. Yeah. Now, are, I is, now is Sophia <laughs> going to do the same thing about the clean school award yes, like sir. Image was doing? Yes, sir. They're going to still continue to do, which I think right. they were doing it first before Image and we. Yeah, I they think were going to do 10 inspections. I think, I think they, they were. I think they were, yes. Yeah, so. Well, we've, we've passed it now anyway, so you check them out real close. Oh, and make sure, between you and Don, make sure everything's the way it should yeah, be. As well, and Kim, our, our attorney. <laughs> so that's what we hire for. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, field trips. Two field trips that are listed here, 8771 and 8772. They both involve the FFA camp trip to White Lake. Northside and Washington will be going together on the 8th of August through the 12th. This is an annual event that uh, is beneficial to our students and our students and adults that participate look forward to it. Because they're going together, they'll be sharing transportation. They're also the female chaperones from Washington will cover the students from Northside and then there'll okay. be additional adult chaperones that are there. So this is an annual request and like to seek your approval for this. Move approval. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second by someone over here. Any questions, last questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Uh, Anybody opposed to that field trip? I'm sure Thank you very much. Great.
transparency. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into closed session. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A1 to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files under General Statute 115C-321. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we're in closed session. Okay, we're back in open session, and the first order of business is to um, approve or, or not our personnel agenda that was just discussed. Move approval. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the personnel agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We okay, have two other items that I need to, uh, to handle as personnel, and I would like to entertain a motion concerning our superintendent. Uh, I make a motion to add an addendum to the employment contract for our superintendent to change revision to terms uh, date from June 30th, 2019 to extend through June 30th, 2020. Okay. Second. Okay, I have a motion to second. Any question about that? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Anybody oppose that? Thank you. Okay. And I would also like to entertain a motion concerning our assistant superintendent. <coughs> I would like to make a motion to extend. <laughs> he knows I love it. I guess say, I'm not sure why that's funny. Because <laughs> I. Else might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll two. see you, Mark. <laughs> I guess, it, um, I guess it's the irony. Rest of that. in my hand. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> to extend Mark's contract to uh, July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2020. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to extend that contract, and I did not twist her arm. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. I happily thank did that. Much. Okay, that moves us into a calendar for August. I guess that would be done. <coughs> you got the Everybody two, can read it. The two dates printed there are the board meetings, if the work session on the 2nd of August and our monthly board meeting on the 16th. We'll need, we normally do a meeting that day that teachers come back, which I think is the 22nd. Is that right, Mark? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we do that in the morning, first thing, um, a quick breakfast and take care of whatever personnel needs to be done then. So we need to add that if you all are able to accommodate that schedule. Why do we stop having the uh, open school day? We, we've expense, oh, expense was one reason but this year the reason was because the way the school calendar bill was written mm -hmm. we don't have as many teacher work days to be okay. able to work from and they felt like uh, when we were working on the calendar they said if we could give that up this year that they'd be able to use that day to be at school and in the classroom so we we graciously did that we're going to do some podcasts and things for the teachers but i hope the following year we'll be able to go back and do it it may be something we do on alternating years oh. so you're looking at the 22nd which is a monday and we need to do it early like we always do. Now, what's early for these guys? Because early for me is like 6, and I know they don't want to be at 6. 5 o'clock, be found. Yeah, I was going to say it worked for me too, well, man, but I doubt we get them very big. In the, in the PM? No, no. We technically allow the people that were, and it shouldn't be that many since we're meeting on August 16th. We, this is the first year since I've been here that we will have a board meeting actually that close. Right. It's the first of the month and the very end of the month. But right. I, I would assume that we'll have some folks on the 22nd but it, you're correct i don't believe it'll be as many won't as be as many and we let allow them to show up at their place so. of employment yeah. just based on the approvals and, and will we meet here because i know we've done it before at different That's locations you'll just meet right here yes yeah. okay what time guys don don when do you need us here can we do well, eight, eight, eight or eight thirty? I mean, eight's fine with me. I, I, I was just thinking you probably want to be out in the schools as soon as you can that morning too, don't well, that, you? Yeah, That's well, first well, day of teachers, not teachers students. Be I mean, we won't we'll be, be out soon. Uh, okay, well, adults. teachers just come. Yes, eight yes. o'clock. We won't be here very long. No. This is just be real quick and say eight a.m. on the twenty-second. Okay, the twenty-second, which is Monday, August twenty-second at eight a.m. And promise you will not be here long. August. Marilyn, um, Carolyn, we just make Randy go to work early. <coughs> okay. That's what we and that's all the meetings we need to talk about. Right well, now. we need to do the ribbon cutting for the two uh, structures, yeah. we, the multi-purpose yes. room at Eastern and, mm -hmm. and the field house at Washington. And trying to find a date that works for everybody is going to be nearly impossible. But I don't, I don't know if there's a date or dates that we could look at that we, Lisa and I could start working on trying to get something scheduled. I think we want to do it ahead of the orientation meetings that they have at Eastern Elementary. I know they're doing some things with the football team and the one at Washington, but 
it'd be nice to go ahead and get that done, get some publicity, pictures taken, and then consider it opened and officially taken care of. Can, can we do can both of them the same day? You know, I'd, I'd like to do both the same day if we could. Can we do, some, are, are we going to think about or looking at doing some kind of a meet and greet for our new principal at Washington High yes, School? And to to just do it all at the same time is what I was thinking. So do they have a better time to, than we than Are they not wanting to do the ribbon cutting thing like at a football game one night? I think they're rather, just because of the use that's going on right now. I haven't talked to them about it, but they're already using it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'd heard that they may want to, you, you mentioned the football team, that they may want to just bring in the team, bring everybody in and do it for the principal, all, everything at one time. And I haven't talked to the, to the coaching staff, but we, we can do that. That, that will ensure they're, it's a crack. They're all in at Coach's Clinic this week, yeah. so just so, well, talk with what, Coach Blank. Would it be possible to do something prior to the work session on August the 2nd? That's what I was Since thinking. you're going to be around already anyway? You just so maybe, maybe do yeah. one at, maybe do Eastern at 3.30 and then go to Washington at 4 and then come over here at 5 or so 3 and whatever. I always look to the work and yeah. I'm, I'm going to be out of town August the 2nd. second. So but don't, don't worry about me if everybody else can, can do it. I've been to the Eastern building and it's impressive. Mm -hmm. I guess find I'm, out. I'm just looking at you, but you're another working person. Yeah, I, I, um, I can make arrangements to do that if, if that's what you want to do. We want to just look at that and get back to us then. Okay. Yeah. So can we do one of those? What is that? That hold a date kind of thing? We will for, for August the second. second. And okay. let's say from at starting at three, if we could do that. I okay. think we could do three, and then get to Washington and then be okay. okay. Send us what you find out, All right. and that's what we'll do. Okay. Anything else on the calendar? August second. August second. Okay. New board new member new update. Banquet. Oh, I'm sorry. New hire banquet date. New hire the for the new hires, which we won't have nearly as many as we've had in the past, but we want to have that hospitality extended to them. We did that last year, you may recall, with the pig picking at, at right. Ed Tech. We'd like nice. to do that again. It worked out great location wise. <clears throat> and our date for that mark is August seventeenth. Seventeenth of August. At six PM. That's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So Ed Tech, six PM. At least you'll be sending all this out, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, what time is that? That's good. Six o'clock. Yeah. Oh, we might bump that meeting up on the 17th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is Ed cooking that pig too? No, Ed ain't gonna cook that pig. He's moving oh, yeah. just into the month of September, just so you have it on your schedules. The 8th of September uh, that evening, and we've got scheduled the Teacher of the Year and Principal of the Year banquet at Ed Tech again, like we did last year. That's uh, September the 8th. That's Thursday. Six o'clock. September the 8th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we did. What does okay. that mean? Okay. Six o'clock. Well, we'll be back together for then, so yes. we'll get plenty of reminders. Okay, anything else? Any board member updates? Superintendent updates? Um, you've got an invitation here that's on the... That we, that we hand out a hard copy to it as well for... Terrence Copper, one of our graduates that we're looking forward to in okay. early August. And then uh, I've got leadership meeting tomorrow with our principals, assistant principals, and our curriculum leaders, and trying to get everything set for the return of school for teachers and students. And just a lot, it's a busy time of year for us. That's a semi formal attire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I just looked at. How do you wear well, look at me. semi formal pig pig? I don't know what I'm wearing. <laughs> I pretty much have one one set of clothes to wear, so that's what I wear. Yeah, I think come by boat. Not come by boat. It's just however you look when you get off the boat. I really. This where is this going to be? At the estuary. That's nice. Okay, I can see that then. I don't know. Like it's necessary to wear semi formal. Well, it says so on here. Well, that's what they said, but that ain't what I said. Well, I, I figured they're the ones supplying <laughs> not, the pigs. So I'm dressed accordingly. Not, not eating no pigs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any thing else it. from anybody? If not, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion, a second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.